Hello everyone, I'm Kiosifer, IKEA Frame Enjoyer, and first of all, I wanted to thank you all so much for helping me reach a thousand subscribers. But I've been seeing a lot of comments on my previous Orbiter decoration video that some people have had some struggles with navigating Warframe's decoration mode, so I wanted to quickly do a proper tour of my Orbiter so far, highlighting my decoration philosophy, and hopefully inspiring some new ideas, and then I'll dive into actually using the decoration mode, so I can show you some of the tips and tricks and jank involved with it. So first of all, to begin with, my landing craft here, I keep pretty sparsely decorated. I think it's already quite a beautiful place without any decorations, which makes sense. DE probably wanted to front load a lot of the beauty of the landing craft into here. I mostly just take advantage of the fact that it's a very well illuminated and very bright area, and kind of fill it with a lot of hanging plants and other kind of floral decorations like that. Going deeper in, I used these wide green artisanal planter pots from Duviri from Acrithus uh, to kind of construct this archway and tunnel down into the deeper area, just because I believe that this kind of intersection is one of the uglier parts of the orbiter, and so I just kind of covered it up because I thought it would look better that way. Heading on to the modding section and the foundry, I try to keep these very mechanical, very kind of simple shapes not much organics, just because that's kind of the theme of these two places. Uh, but I also try to preserve some of the whimsicalness and the beauty of the Duviri aesthetic. You can see these are basically what I would imagine a machine like this to look in the Duviri landscape, probably less rigid and less kind of cobbled together like this, but I had to work with the space that I was provided. I used lecterns, uh, barrels, and mugs here to kind of form up and build up this shape. And you see I also did that on this side as well, although it's a slightly different design because it's got a different shape and profile. For the arcanes, I tried to keep it very whimsical and very beautiful just because of how arcanes work in my mind. I used the Steel Path reward for clearing all Duviri missions, along with a simple display showing some of Duviri's landscape. For the pets, I tried to keep it as jolly and playful as possible steering around different floofs and eye hand sculptures and all sorts of different other random objects that I have found. Again, I didn't try to spend any platinum on any of this, so I'm kind of working with what I've got here, but I think I've, I've captured a good vibe. Similarly, the sentinels here and ro other robotic companions, I just decorated with some eye hand sculptures because I think that that kind of fit the vibe as well. You can see here I made some... You can see here I made some structures out of the different Daviri planter pots, and again out of the mugs. I find that these are very versatile objects for just building out a shape if you want to kind of construct something, whether it's flat or round. You can see I also use these wide green planter pots on the ceiling to kind of form these large rounded edges for the ceiling. Over here by my relics, I tried to match the scene with as many quest rewards, and other kind of treasures I found while exploring the Warframe system. So you've got Aetan sculptures and floofs and tea sets and all sorts of other things here. I really like this corner. I think a theme that I like to really suggest you go for is not necessarily a specific idea, but just filling a space with a story. What do you want to tell here in this corner of the ship? Similarly, I really recommend walling off one of the doorways down. It's just not a ton of space to work with, and as you can see over here, I couldn't really decorate it. So I would really recommend choosing one of the sides, it doesn't really matter which one, and just walling it off so that you can decorate more in this space. Over here, again, trying to tell a story, we've just kind of got our rest and relaxation corner, uh, Grenier, Frontier Gunner, possibly passed out. No idea what the story is here, but it's kind of fun to imagine, and it builds a theme for what you may want to be building for when you're decorating. My arsenal, likewise, has a story of the different Warframes that I've already leveled to max via these Prex cards, which you get from the Leverian after you've leveled the respective Warframe to level 30. I've just kind of decorated this area with mostly them as the focus, and then some plants, again, because I really like having a very floral and very vegetal theme to my Orbiter, because I think that that's really pretty and the easiest thing to do w without spending any platinum. Going down below, you see I've got this doorway leading to the infested room, which I have not decorated much because I also think it is quite well decorated already, and so I kind of have left it as it is. It's a beautiful place, uh, but there's not really too much you can do with it w without spending platinum on some infested themed decorations. 
over here, I've decorated the engine in kind of creating this, again, machine-like structure similar to my foundry and mods area. I used a Zeremin plinth, one of the statue plinths. There's two of them. One of them is super expensive. One of them is super cheap. I don't know why, but I bought a bunch of these cheap ones and I'm still trying to figure out how to use it, but I think this is one of the best places because it kind of covers up a lot of the original ship while also building a really unique shape. It kind of reminds me of Umbra's prison in the sacrifice quest. And I think that really matches the lighting down here. Similarly, here is a kind of eating and dining area. I think the most important thing is to work with the lighting that you have. I haven't found any way of making it so that the lighting and the ship is any better, even if you do add in additional lights. They just don't do anything, it seems. So I had to pick the brightest spot in the underground section and fill it out with stuff like that. See, also beginning to mess around with mastery plaques i think these are great i love that these are given out for free they're a little hard to use and so i haven't included them a lot in my designs but i'm sure that you can come up with some great ideas for them and yeah so that's basically how i've been building it up i really want to hit on the main three themes which are creating corners trying to block out sections so that you can explore more of the space and build something out really cool that's the first one. Second, i think you really should be telling stories with this I think you should try and find a way to populate space with stories, even if you're just covering up some ugly section of the ship. For example, this kind of lip here that I didn't want to be shown. I just tossed a floof down there, and it's presumably maybe a pet knocked it over. Maybe my Kubra went through and tossed it around. I think that that's super powerful and a great way of hiding the uglier parts of your ship that you can't really decorate other ways. And finally, the last thing that I really suggest is just playing around with it finding the things that are cheap and coming up with really interesting and unique ways of using them. For example, again, the statue plinth, it's the cheaper one. It isn't the one that's as versatile because it has these ridges, but because I was able to mess around with it and find something cool, I think it actually improved the design instead of going for a more expensive option that may have been more universally applicable. And yeah, that's basically my orbiter so far. I've spent some time decorating it, but not a ton. I think really it's just something that I'd like to passively return to you whenever I feel inspired. I think if you want to decorate it all in one fell swoop, you're going to burn yourself out. So I really would pace myself. I've also heard a lot of people have issues with specifically decorating behind the pets incubator. And I just really wanted to highlight that as a segue into actually going into building. So you can see here, it's not super hard. I think the problem that a lot of people may have had is that they're using a building wall that is just way too big. If you shrink it down to the right size and then have it snap, it really is not that hard to get it into place. Just kind of got to mess with it a little bit. And then the moment you find a orientation or a setting that works, you can click it in there. And then you can see it's not perfectly lined up. If I zoom in a little closer, it's a little far. And that's kind of where the main tool I use, which is constrained movement. So if I hit the R button here, it will bring up this constrained movement setting. And that allows me to depending on different buttons I press, move only in a single axis. For this, I want to move on the x-axis, so I'm going to hit the R button and just kind of slide back. I'm going to turn off grid snapping so it will meld into the wall, and then I know that it will be in place once it starts to plane fight with the other one behind it. See there? I've got the wall back in place exactly as it was before. I think, actually, I might have nudged it in too far, but that's fine because I'll pull up the constrained movement again and do the exact same thing, sliding it into place once more. So I just wanted to highlight again that this is not that hard once you get used to it. I'm going to be demonstrating the decoration mode of Warframe using by rebuilding this doorway over here on this side and highlighting some of the other tips and tricks that I know while building and some of the other struggles that you may come into. So first of all, looking at this design, you can see that I've got these barrels here and they're kind of stuck inside one another. So to accomplish that, I will quickly turn back to grid snapping. I think that working with 0.25 meters is great for most stuff. You want something that's kind of big and chunky so you don't need to make a ton of micro movement. But as you can see here, I can't move this down. It's not gonna work. It won't let me clip it into there. However, a way to solve that is to move this out of the way first, slide this down, Make sure that it's in place and then move it back. It's weird. There are some order of operations that you may need to do here. It seems that 
the main issue is that the collision box of most of these objects is at their base, which means that moving this into that would not work. However, this one doesn't mind that its base is moving this way because it's fine and it does not really matter if it clips with the stuff above it. So we've gotten that in place, gotten that rotated. Let's move this over as well. We'll put that there and just double check. Looks in place, that looks good. We'll just need to rotate it. I'll duplicate this instead of pulling it out again. It may lag for a little bit as it's spawning in a new object. And we'll repeat the same trick again for this wall. Looks in place. We slide it back. And wonderful. So we've got that base down. Let's just double check and see. All right, you can kind of measure by how many rings and other small details you can see. So we can see all three of these here, but the last one is very close to the wall. So we'll just need to double check that that is correct, and it is. So now let's duplicate this thing and slide it into place. I'll rotate it that as well. It may lag for a moment again as it's loading in. So this looks like, I need to put it here. I'll need to move these pillars back over this way as well. And I'm not saying that this is super easy, it is incredibly janky, but it really isn't that bad once you get used to it. As you can see, it's not very hard to understand the limits of this program, and as long as you're willing to just keep trying, and you don't give up, it's really not that bad. You can see, I just noticed that this is rotated too far, but that's fine, because within constraint movement, there also is the option to rotate it. So I don't need to do that whole thing again, I'll just rotate it in place. Finally, let's grab these hanging plot pots. And I'll hit X to reset the movement and rotation, just because I'm worried that it may be messed up. Rotate it to the same thing, slot it to the hole. Let's just double check what it looks like here, okay. Like it won't be a perfect mirror, but that's kind of the problem with a lot of these things, it seems. Generally, things don't really like to be mirrored. There is some asymmetry across the orbiter, which is very annoying, but as you can see, some of these decorations are not perfectly aligned. Like this Ludoplex here does not perfectly mirror with how the ship is. It actually is slightly off kilter, as you can kind of see here. And there are some obnoxious idiosyncrasies and asymmetry asymmetries with the ship that you just kind of need to work with and live with. There we are. That looks right. Alrighty, so now we've got the door, door design duplicated on both sides. You can see here, looks correct, basically the same, looks correct, basically the same. And now I'm just going to quickly slide the wall back in place, again using constrained movement. So let's move first the X dimension back just a little bit so that we can make it flush with the wall. And then let's move the Z axis. Move this also back a bit. Actually, let's see if we can move this a little closer. A 
You know, double check if that's correct. It looks like it is. It looks like it's good, except for this bevel of this wall is slightly not flush with it, so we shall change movement. Move this back ever so slightly. And there we are. We've now duplicated the door design on the other side. Hopefully you can see from this that it is, again, a little messy and a little difficult to work with these different functions in the Warframe Builder, but it really isn't too bad. I, that was made in, you know, maybe five minutes or less. And I think I may decide to cover up these uglier sections of the ship, so to do that, I think I'm going to pull out one of these wide green pots. Set the grid snapping to 0.25. Nope, it's camera facing. That's not a good setting. Okay, so with some of the other settings of this Warframe Builder, you can see that there's camera facing, surface snapping, push and pull. Those, I think, are generally not incredibly useful. There are some things that are amazing with it. And uh, obviously the scale thing is incredible. I use that all the time. I find the best use for push and pull, at least, is if you find an object like this and it's so big that it seems to be clipping with you, try using push-pull instead of assuming that it's automatically clipping into something else that it shouldn't be. Because sometimes if you're like this and you just can't ever place it down because your camera is just too close to it and no matter how much you move, no matter where you go, it won't work. And the answer to that is basically to hit the push-pull function and push it away from you so that you can then start maneuvering it at a distance from you. Uh, likewise, I think the surface snapping and face camera options are less useful. Surface snapping I sometimes will use if I have a table or some other object that's off kilter and I want to attach something to it that also would need to match that same level. But generally speaking, for all other applications, I don't really do the surface snapping. Alrighty, and that's mostly about everything I wanted to cover on this video today. I hope you guys have some ideas now for how you may want to decorate your orbiter and a little bit more idea of how to actually use the decoration function in Warframe. It is a little complex, I'll admit. It's not the most easy to understand and natural thing, but it's really not that bad once you get used to it, and I really recommend dabbling in it and experimenting with it, because I think it is super great and really can transform a scene to be an entirely different vibe, one that really fits whatever you're going for. So, yeah, thank you all so much for watching. Hope to see you guys create some beautiful or orbiters for your own. I think there's a lot of really cool stuff played with here, but also I'm sure that there's a ton of other interesting themes that you can totally do without spending any platinum at all. So, yeah, thank you all so much for watching, and uh, have a great day.